dipolar transistors have revolutionized electrical engineering. Their development formed the basis for modern electronics and information technology. By the 1980s, bipolar transistors were increasingly replaced by field effect transistors, which triggered a boost in the development of logic and CPU circuits. Although the idea for field effect transistors is older than that for bipolar transistors, it was technically not possible to produce them at first. When the necessary semiconductors finally were developed, field effect transistors became inferior to bipolar transistors. Due to years of further development, they overtook the bipolar transistor and are now an integral part of modern ICs in the form of MOSFETs. But the first form of the field effect transistor was the JFET, which is the subject of this video. Welcome to today's video on types of transistors. Junction field effect transistors, or JFETs for short, use a field to control the current flow. The operation is very similar to a hose. Normally, water is flowing almost freely. But if you pinch the hose at one point, less water flows. And instead of the rather crude tools that our fingers are, JFETs generate this pinching by an electric field. But one thing after the other. Let's have a look inside the JFET first. Inside the JFET, we will find two differently doped regions in principle. One region connects two contacts called source and drain. The source pin is the source of charge carriers. Here, charge carriers enter the transistor. The drain removes these charge carriers, similar to the drain in a kitchen sink. The current flows between drain and source and passes the narrowing. The region below this necking is the most important part of the JFET and is called the channel. Drain and source are conductively connected. A JFET is therefore self-conducting and with an applied voltage we can increase the resistivity of the channel. Depending of which doping we used for this region, we call the transistor either an N-channel or a P-channel JFET. But how do we control the current flow? This is where the last part of our transistor comes in. The second region is a P-doped for an N-channel device and inversely doped for a P-channel device. A P-N junction is formed at the boundary and along with it an electric field. This electric field removes mobile charge carriers and creates the depletion layer. As there are no mobile charge carriers in the depletion layer, no current can flow through it. If we now apply a reverse voltage between the channel and the third contact, we strengthen the electric field and cause the depletion layer to expand. Thus, we pinch the channel and reduce current flow. If the applied voltage is high enough, we can even completely turn off the channel of the JFET. The third contact acts like the gatekeeper of the middle ages, and so it's aptly called the gate. Like any electronic component, the JFET has a circuit symbol. The arrow indicates whether it is an N-channel or a P-channel JFET. It is a simplified diode symbol that indicates the direction of the PN junction. Similar to the bipolar transistor from before, there are several characteristics giving the behavior of the JFET. There are the input characteristic, the transfer characteristic, the output characteristic, and the current gain. To operate a JFET in a meaningful way, we have to apply either zero volt or a negative voltage to the gate with respect to source. This also means that only a small current is flowing through the gate. With good approximation, this small current can be neglected and we assume no current is flowing through the gate. Thus, giving an input characteristic or a current gain is not viable for the JFET. But since almost no current flows into the gate, the input resistance is very high. 
Therefore, the influence on external components connected to the gate is often neglectable. The transfer characteristic is much more interesting. It plots the drain current ID over the gate source voltage VGS. At the gate source voltage of VGS equals zero volt, the channel is open and the drain current ID can flow freely. But once we decrease VGS, which means we increase the reverse voltage, the channel gets narrower and constricts the drain current. Eventually, VGS is sufficiently negative to complete pinch off the channel and no drain current is flowing anymore. For the P-channel JFET, the voltage is of course reversed. It requires a positive voltage at the gate in order to turn off the channel. The output characteristic shows how the drain current is influenced by the drain source voltage. And we also know that the drain current is a strong function of the gate source voltage, as we have just seen in the transfer characteristic. Similar to the bipolar transistor, there are actually infinite many output characteristics. Which one is active is of course determined by the gate source voltage. To represent these different characteristics, a couple of selected lines are drawn into the output characteristic at once. If we apply a certain gate source voltage, we simply select one of these lines. Just like the bipolar transistor, the characteristics field of the JFET can be divided into different regions of operation, in which the transistor has different properties. They are the cutoff region, the linear region and the saturation region. Also for the JFET should be noted that the input and output designations are only conventions to describe the behavior and is totally unrelated to any circuit's input and output. Of course, we can connect the transistor in any way we want to. In this video, we continue to talk about different transistors available. This time, we focused on the junction FET. Again, we barely scratched the surface of it, but it should give a brief overview of the prevailing mechanisms of a JFET. In the following video, we want to talk about the third important transistor type, the MOSFET. I'm Christoph with the Institute of Electronics. We hope you've learned something today, but anyways, thanks for watching.